Welcome everybody to 7D, The Age of the Rose. We join our heroes in the year 720 of Our Lady on the shores of Astura, a newly refounded kingdom that exists in the shadow of a great war fought not that long ago between the servants of Our Lady, Queen Gloriana, who represents all that is righteous and good in the world, and the Shadow King, her vile, dark counterpart, who once ruled these lands. But now they have been liberated, repopulated by good and upstanding folk. And, specifically, the city of Toloneth is a shining example of what it means to live in the light of Our Lady. A great city of spires and minarets erected underneath a waterfall that flows throughout the city, providing fresh water to all and allowing flowers of every color to grow all throughout. There is nowhere in this city that lacks for color or the vibrancy of life. Nowhere, perhaps, except for where it should exist the most, the gardens. Down underneath the city, in the shadows of the great waterfalls, is a uh, field-sized garden of brilliant pink and purple flowers that exists to give somewhere for the citizens of the town to get away from the bustle of life and to meditate to contemplate the beauty of the world around them, what they have accomplished since their uh, reconquista of this place. However, our heroes have arrived on a day that should have been celebration. They had their fortunes told by a traveling gypsy, and these cards pointed to adventure. As we join our heroes at this gypsy's table, though, we see that all around them the flowers have grown small and wilted. They do not shine with the vibrancy they should. Everywhere around you seems to be more full of shadows than it has any right to be. Something is deeply wrong in this place. Now, for the benefit of each other and our audience, Let's go around the table and say who our characters are and what the gypsy read of your fortune, starring with Bellasan, played by Merzendi. The, the you mean Meowzandi? Meow yes, Meowzandi. I am Bellasan, a Raidan mage. Uh, the gypsy found that, that my greatest calling is discovery and learning of secrets. My destiny is in daring and my dark fate is envy. Now, you are, just to remind our audience, literally actually a cat. Yes, I am a, uh, I am literally just a somewhat large black cat with green eyes. Excellent. Do you have uh, an arcane focus on you or any sort of equipment? Yes. Uh, I do have a small focus, a little uh, bell that I wear on a chain around my neck. Oh, God, it's adorable. All right, and uh, Adamaris, played by Pets in Winter. Okay. Yes, uh, I am Adamaris. Uh, my uh, calling is, ar is the star, artistic mastery. My destiny is hopeful, which doesn't fit well with artists, but I guess it means I'm new. <laughs> And uh, my dark fate is um, is um, being a miser. 
penny pinching and all that. Uh, I see, I see. As a... Now, I... you have a bit more to you than just uh, being a house cat, so would you mind <laughs> yeah. describing your character as you linger in this darkened garden? Uh, yes, uh, I am... I'm an elf. I, uh, with, uh, black hair and, uh, and, uh, dark colored skin. I, I'm a, I'm a gypsy, a traveler, and as such I wear, uh, traveling clothes for the most part. Alright. I'm a painter. A painter. And, uh, is there any indication as to what class you might be? Be you a mage uh, I carry a bow as an expert. Ah, yes, the expert. All right, and Amelia, Big old long bow. played by Scow. Indeed, I am Amelia the Hood Bellhart. I am, of course, an advocate of justice for the little person, despite looking like a spooky elf. I am. Uh, uh, my calling is the tower, in which I would lower the lofty. I would bring the nobles down and raise up the people. Totally not playing this part, this short session game things communist. That's not happening. But you know, think Robin Hood and not um, the father of torches. <laughs> uh, I am the uh, my. Uh, card thing is the six of pentacles and that is that i am magnanimous which means you know again i'm all about doing the good deeds for the people and of course uh i'm sneaky i'm a sneaky person i do things sneakily i sneak around i like to sneak it can be seen as a bad thing because being sneaky is not generally con like conclusive with uh being trustworthy but that doesn't matter because i don't have to be trustworthy around nobles they're just walking money for the little people. And I am a dark-skinned, dark-haired, like, pale-eyed elfin figure, dressed in leathers and wielding likewise a bow, but also a nice, sturdy rapier rests on the belt. And I assume you actually do have a hood to go along with your name? Oh, well, actually, no. That's because I like <laughs> irony, you see. Uh, the hood does not wear a hood. Delightful. My disguise is not in anonymity, but amongst the people. Right, as someone who stands out dramatically from everyone around you. Yes. It's the perfect disguise. They'll never think to look for me in the most obvious place. Right in plain sight. Alright. Uh, Vic Vicoria, played by DCL. Right. I am Vic Vicoria, a mysterious ebony man with rippling muscles and a stunning smile. But on this earth for two things, to be beautiful and to answer the call of adventure. Guess which one was drawn as my calling? I am hailed for my quick wit and charm, and on a bad day I can be said to be just a bit domineering. But of course I am. I'm a gorgeous man in a giant glimmering plate of armor with a gilded two-hander. If there's evil, I slay it. If there's treasure, I claim it. And if there's damsels, I save them. Excellent. For a moment, I thought you were saying, if there's damsels, I distress them. And I was like, uh oh, <laughs> wrong setting. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. I haven't done anything bad yet. Yet. And, uh, do you bear weapons and armor on you? Mm hmm. Like I said, plate armor and my two hander. Alright. Each one catches the sun as I pose. Ah, sun bro. Yes, I see. Is there any other Is there any other brotherhood worth being a part of? The answer is no. It's true. It's very true. All right. And Q, played by Q, who didn't fill out his character's name. I totally did. You not no. Is it not on my uh tabby gun? It your, I mean, your name on the uh, the character roster is Q the Love Fairy, so... Oh, we'll go with that for now, then, sure. <laughs> Alright, uh, Shin Fallon, played by uh, Q. 
who is, in fact, the best love fairy. Thank you. Uh, so my things were the uh, oh God, the Emperor, the Nine of Rods, and the Knight of Chalices. So my calling is temporal power. Power of a temperature, but not really. It's of a time. And my destiny is diplomative. And my fate is manipulative. So really, I just want to rule over everything, including the fabric of time. I keep everyone at arm's length, which uh, has even gone down into my weapon, which is a pole arm. So I can make sure that there's always a, a, a circumference of space around me. And I hold everyone at arm's length to move them on the chessboard that is my life. All right, and uh, what does your character look like? Uh, a white-skinned, quite pale, silver-haired elf. All right, to bear you weapons or armor, or the staff of magi? Uh, I bear a polearm. A polearm, I see. An interesting choice of weapons to take to a garden, but... Perhaps that is better done than not, given that this place seems so twisted. And indeed, today should have been the day of cups, a day of giving and plenty among the people. There was to be a festival, but few people have come down here to the gardens, and you can all see why. The flowers are small and wilted, the folk here nervous-looking. And among them, you see a great red wolf stalking amongst the many paths, seeming to search for something. So, Ooh, the gypsy who has read your fortunes looks nervously around and then gives you each a bow, saying, Well, I'm, I'm going to be up in the city then, I think. It's getting a bit a bit chilly down here. She bundles her great red scarf around herself and uh, slides her tarot deck back into its uh, lovely inlaid wooden case. Wait, where are you headed? Uh, back up to the city. She'll point to the uh, she'll point up the waterfall to this great marble structure it's rising high above you. And why would you do that? You're just about to miss the part where we, heroically, swoop in and fix what's wrong. <laughs> well, uh, I wish you all the best in that, but uh, if there's one thing my father told me, it's uh, never be where the action is. It's a good way to stay alive. She gives you a wink, a flourished bow, and then turns on a heel to walk away. Holy shit, look, they found a better token for you, DCL. Nah, I remember that one. I, I specifically said, I, can, I can't live up to the awesomeness of Terry Crews, and I refuse to take that token. <laughs> Alright, that, that's fair. But in spirit. In spirit. In spirit. Alright, so. The garden lies all around you, above, below, and in all cardinal directions. It stretches on for several hundred yards, and to the south, a great waterfall rushes past, taking the water that has come through the entire city and uh, depositing it back into a river that will take it to the ocean. By the way, mm -hmm. did we see them actually draw, um, the uh, fortune tale actually draw cards for the cat? Uh, yeah. So do we just have a kid? Do we? Do any of us know that this cat is actually intelligent yet, or are we all um, all of us just assuming it's a cat that's just around for some reason? I assume these psychic animals are more commonplace than that. So yeah, are they're they? rare, but certainly not unheard of. Like again, you've yeah, seen this huge red wolf just prowling around in here. I mean, yeah, but doesn't mean psychic. So I don't know. just trying to get a bearing. So, we have a garden in front of us, and it obviously has something wrong with it, so that is a call to adventure if ever. Sure.
<laughs> going to is move forward to the garden? Because that's what I'm thinking. Possibly observing this garden. What was that, Scow? Sorry. Is there anything of importance I could observe in this garden? Well, that's a good question. Why don't you make me a perception check? Yay. And I have you focus on seeing things. You do. Doot. Alright, hey, you even rolled doubles. Which means you get the potential to pull off a stunt. My eyes do a backflip. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you all click over here onto the stunt table, uh, you will see that you can spend your uh, your success here when you roll doubles to get additional effects. In your case, uh, the uh, the third die in the chain is a three, so you have three stunt points to spend on mm. any stunt you like. Probably a role playing or exploration stunt given what you're attempting. Can you choose multiple? Uh, if you have enough stunt points, yeah. So you could, uh, ch say, choose efficient search and then an advantageous positioning. I'm going to go with a speedy search and advantageous positioning, actually. Okay, so you just glance around very quickly, and you make your discovery from an advantageous position of your choice. All right. So you find a good place to be standing as you look about the place. Just on someone. <laughs> yeah, you're just uh, up in a, uh, uh, a gazebo. The so, I don't know, some mysterious giant red wolf shoulders. It's so advantageous up here. Hello, yeah. friend. <laughs> <laughs> and indeed, uh, you don't see anything overtly wrong that would be causing this. Like, there's no great magic artifact jutting up out of the ground. There's no dark cultists saying eldritch words, but you do smell something in the air. It's like the faintest smell of sulfur. Ugh. Oh, did the fucking wolf cut one? <laughs> uh, so you think that, and the wolf just turns and looks at you, and you see uh, disdain in its great yellow eyes as it prowls past you. I'm going to, I'll, I'll, I'll speak loudly in, in, in my brain. Because these things be psychic, yes? If they're uh, the intelligent kind? Yes. Alright. Does one have to actually, you know, like... Can, can you think words at this race and they will hear it? That's a good question. I don't believe so, but Merge, you might have a better uh, understanding. I... As I understand it, the um, Raidan has to manually initiate psychic contact. Then you can, uh, then you can have a talky talk. They can't just passively hear thoughts, right? Ah, uh, okay. I'll roll my eyes. You can smell it too, though, right? There's something weird going on here. And I assume it's not you, then. The wolf turns from its patrol and pads towards you, and uh, as it does so, you feel the uh, the slightest pressure in your head. Something that would be easy to just shake off if you so desired, but if oh, you no, let no. it, it could spread. Yeah, no. Much, much as one is willing to uh, open a door to a stranger, but they've still got their foot on the jam, I'll, I'll open up the door, and if it turns out to be just conversation, I won't go slamming it shut. Okay, yeah. So you hear a, a deep, masculine voice in your head that says, Yes, this place has grown dark in recent days. Something is poisoning it, I fear. Mm. Any ideas on what that might be? He sniffs the air and turns his attention towards the water and... Um, Bellisan, you too feel that little knock on your mental walls. Yeah, I'll lower my shield. The voice enters your mind as well. You sense the foulness on the air. Rather, do you not? Mm. Yes, I felt something a little off from how, I, how it should be. 
Mm. And now both of you can hear the wolf's voice say, I fear it is the water growing tainted. It carries a reek about it. Hmm. Is there something in the water? Not here. I have prowled further than the garden, up to the highest reaches of the city. Even there, at the sources, where the river runs into the waterfall, it smells foul. Hmm. Interesting. One would think the nobles would be taking care of the water further up. One would. Yet, uh, I have seen no one come or go from the palace in two days now. Ah, uh, nobles. They like to pretend their shit doesn't smell like the rest of ours. I think they've been pooping in the lake. Um. Hmm. I know I, I like to pilfer on nobles. Is it weird for no one to have traveled the traversed the castle recently? Yes. Uh, so this is a, a country of nobles who actually do things. And generally speaking, these are good, pure-hearted nobles as well. Uh, Jesus, Princess fuck Cel weird in fantasy land. <laughs> yes. Princess Celestant Annalise is a handmaiden of Gloriana, a priestess dedicated to the power of light more so than she is any blooded noble. For her to ignore a problem like this would be almost unthinkable. Hmm. And you said nobody's come out of the castle. That I have seen, no. Obviously the castle is the first point of interest to investigate, then. The wolf will nod. This Indeed. water might still hold secrets. I'm gonna crouch down in front of the water. I would uh, like to try to use my second sight on the water. Okay. Now, what does that let you do? Um. Let's see. In this case, I think I would. Hmm, actually, no, I don't. That requires both the talents? God. No, I, I don't have a... I don't actually have visionary as well, so I can't use it as actively as I had wanted. Hmm. That's disappointing. Oh well. So you don't have the second uh, sight arcana? I do, but to, say, read an arcane signature, uh, apparently you need psychic and visionary. Ah, I see what you're saying, yes. Alright, hmm. but you can certainly uh, sense arcan or sense uh, psychic energies, if you so desire. I'm going to go with the medieval scientific method of sticking my pinky in the water and licking it. Okay. Uh, you do so, and it tastes fine. In fact, to you, it smells mostly fine. Hmm. Nothing outside of the usual on the outset. Tastes like perfectly fine water. Hmm. I wouldn't have thought, uh... Well, uh, good thinking. I can make a second sight sense arcana test if it doesn't work for Meow's Andy. Oh. And it sense arcana is supposed to be the narrator making a uh, test in secret. Uh, mm -hmm. I was just waiting for confirmation of would you like to make one, I suppose. Uh, yes, please. Okay. I do have perception with a psychic focus. Alright, uh, what is perception your perception? Perception 3. Okay. Sorry. So, 3 to 6 plus 5. 
Okay. You don't sense any nearby arcana use other than, of course, the uh, the wolf's psychic contact with you and with the hood. But you sense the latent, lingering hints of magic on the water. Just a speckle or two here and there. Some arcanum has fallen upon this water, that I can say for sure. What, though? I cannot tell. Well, we won't figure that out until we go up to the noble blocks. Oh, well, my favorite thing to do. Tell me if you spot anything nice and shiny and merely ostentatious with no other uses. The wolf will give you all as a group a nod and say, I couldn't help but overhear your cards, Red Adventure. I wish you luck in this endeavor. Perhaps oh. you are the force we need to help heal this garden. Well, since I'm here, that's for guaranteed. Yes, because he's here. If the wolf could fine. smile, he would. Instead, he just bears a <laughs> few looks like a shit and, ton of teeth. Yeah. yeah. And sits down I'm going to take haunches. that as... I'm going to take that as a smile, because I tend to inspire confidence. Either way, we have our colorful band of misfits and our adventure right ahead of us. Indeed, indeed. Oh, um, before we go, of course, a terrible habit of mine to forget. What is your name, sir? Ah, I am Matteo. My brother Sebastian and I once tended this garden before the Shadow King fell. Is Sebastian still amongst us, or has he moved on? The wolf looks sad for a moment and says, When the Shadow King claimed this land, Sebastian f stayed to fight. I have not seen him in many years. A shame indeed. Surely he is at least immortalized in his actions. Heroes never tend to die. The wolf will give you a sage nod and then prowl off into the high grasses of the garden. Yep, can make a name of Mateo there. Mateo the wolf. Alright, so how does one head up to the noble districts where we're at? Because from the map at least it looks like the garden is very isolated. It is. There is a long and winding path from the garden up uh, through the mountains and then across a bridge over the waterfall, and then you get into the city. So what you're saying is it's time for cardio. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's going to take you an hour or so to get back into the city, yeah. Jeez. Da -da -da -da. I'm just going to sing my stair climbing song. Oh, please tell me you don't have a song for the entirety of the stairs. Of course I do. There are a lot of stairs. Like that's that's basically... But never mind. I mean, we always could make conversation if you don't want to indulge in the stair climbing song. Well, let's go with, con with conversation. Conversation works. Conversation sounds good to me. <laughs> Ah, uh, phooey. No one has any taste anymore. But, yeah. I agree. Conversation would be nice, especially since we've all just met each other. And I'm going to attempt to psychic contact with everyone. So I sure. don't get left out. Sure, I won't, I won't shut it out. Same. Keep, keeping pace with the stair climbing adventure. I will shut it out. If it's a possibility. So edgy. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, man. 
Yeah. First thing. <laughs> first thing I think we should mark work out is marketing shares. Okay. Um, I'm not actually going to try to force it through. <laughs> that would be amazing. I should have. Yeah. Well, fuck you. <laughs> oh, that is a thing. Um, I know. No. Oh, goodness. Well, I figured first we'd go with actual, you know, names and how long you've been in the city. Things like that. What do you do? Oh, that'll be all be stuff we cover very quickly. As I have a feeling we're all going to be together for quite the adventure. It, it's always Pretty good to, to, to start with names at the very least. Um, I go by Amelia. And then the fourth wall is broken. Didn't you hear the introduction? We all heard our names. Okay. <laughs> Vic Victoria, but I'm sure there's nobody here who has not already heard that name. Uh... Adamaris. Did I do it? Um, oh, I don't know. I guess, yes, I actually probably have heard that name. <laughs> is he that famous? And who are yes, you, my I'm... silent friend? And I'll go over to, uh... Uh, Q, what's your character's name? Shin Falan. I'll go over to Shin and pat him on the shoulder. I'll... I'll look at him, smile briefly, and then take, like, three steps the other way. <laughs> Don't take Shut no up. offense, friend. It's just... I like my personal space. Uh, I get it. A shy one. It'll be good for the group dynamic. Sure, that'll be it. Hmm. And I am Bellison of the West. I don't hear that though, do I? Nope. Yeah. In fact, I'll, 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 I'll turn to, to Paley. And this one here is Bellison. Of the known West. It. Of the West. West of where? Of here? Here. <laughs> also yes. known as our top building as well. A talking cat amongst a colorful group of misfits. Why we have marketability through the roof. Hmm. I kind of look around to the group and go like, you all seem confused of what I'm talking about. You didn't think being an adventurer just stopped at adventuring. Speak for yourself. Heroes have to be immortalized through their actions, after all. It's all about legacy that you leave behind as well as the actions you do. And by legacy, I mean selling your story. You had me up until selling. Ah, uh, everybody needs to eat and sleep and afford rent. Yes, Adventuring is not I... a job done on an empty coffer. I have not traveled with tall folk before. That's a lot of static going I on. Sorry, that's some water boiling. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, now I want a cup of tea. I suppose you have greater appetites to match your greater height. Oh, I can eat out a whole tavern. I have several times. That's why they don't let me back in there. <laughs> Hmm. So what brought you to the city, I suppose, all of you? And I'll, like, stare longingly at these stairs. Why aren't you finished yet, stairs? <laughs> oh, these stairs are great for workouts. I personally came here for the beauty of the city. A nice resting place from all the troubles and rough and tumble from adventuring. Sort of the same. I'm just a traveler, like seeing the sights, going where the wind takes me. I see. Very lovely and uh, romantic a journey concept. Yes. What about you, Bailey? Uh, you know, here for reasons to make. Friends, yeah. Ah, you say that in the most trustworthy and believable way. 
Thank you. <laughs> yes, 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 he does. He really does. Shake my head idly. <laughs> <laughs> so many friends, good buddies. Minions. I'm friends, friends minions. with a capital F and all the air quotes. <laughs> Don't worry. Nothing makes greater friends than going through a trial together. And from the sounds of it, we have quite the task ahead of ourselves. Don't think of this as me counting our chickens too early, but I think this is going to be a rather deadly encounter. Not if you sit at the back. But I'm sure if we're all together by the hand of fate, each one of us is capable in our own way. Hmm. I suppose so. Regardless, any theories as to what might be going on in this castle ahead of ours? It's unusual for... You know, good noble folk to go missing, such as it were. Absolutely none. Perhaps the princess has been seduced by a sorcerer of the East, and now he spreads dark magic to cast aside the lady's light again? Nah, the princess has better taste than that. I mean, she turned me down, after all. She did, did she? That's where I recognize your name from. Ah, uh, yes, the re refusal story of 68. Legendary. Yes, if I remember, you were forced to exit with a pants full of fish. To the raucous cheering and laughter of all who witnessed. Was it a rather entertaining time? However, did you live such a matter down? Live it down? It's one of the greatest stories I have in my collection. Life is full of surprises, both good and bad. You're not truly living unless you experience both. Hmm. I personally prefer to keep all of my bad experiences from becoming famous stories. Besides, shame is the concept of lesser men. I have nothing I'm ashamed of. Really? I live my I life gloriously and make sure that every action I take has no regrets behind it. Well, okay then. An inspiring thing to look up to indeed. Of course. By the way, the fish barrel was not over-exaggerated. I was pulling scales on my butt for a week. Hmm. Amazing. <laughs> Shake my head a little. Alright, so as you are uh, finishing this uh, legendary story, uh, you find yourselves at the gates of the city, just beside a, a rushing waterfall coming down from the palace. Uh, to those of you with more acute senses, the smell of sulfur is much more noticeable here, uh, as is the smell of bodies. Not dead bodies, but living, breathing people uh, packed together for the celebration. Uh, but Okay, less bad. Yeah, less bad. Uh, one of those, however, uh, comes towards you out of the city. He's a rather heavy-set, uh, normally jovial-looking merchant with a, a great bushy set of sideburns and mustache. Uh, but at the moment, he's coughing quite heavily into a, into a handkerchief almost doubling over with the intensity of it. I'll bring out a water skin and hand it over to the coughing man and go, Here, brother, take a drink. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Thank you, son. <laughs> he leans back and drinks and drinks and drinks and drinks until it's almost empty, and then he rubs uh, his mouth on the back of his hand and hands your skin back. <laughs> God, I just... It's not feeling well these days. I uh, have a thirst on you. Been doing busy... No, I'm busy doing heavy, laborious activities, hmm? No, oh, but I'm sweating like a pig anyway! And he will, uh, sort of wring out his, uh, his tunic, which you can see, yeah, all around the, 
the underarms and uh, the chest are great big wet splotches that are spreading throughout the day, and it's like fall now. It's not hot at all. Take a Rather look, strange. Back. Rather strange things have been befalling the town. Are you the only one suffering like this? I don't know. I'm just a merchant. I don't spend more than 30 seconds with most... F <laughs> Fuck. Doubles over again and shakes his head. Oh, of course. Oh, uh, well, excuse me. i just gonna go. Just gonna... And he takes a few steps past you and face plants. Uh, that's troubling. I feel like one of us should go over and check on his health. I'm yes, you should. I'm gonna climb onto his chest and try to feel his breathing, if it's still going. Uh, shallowly, but yes. He's alive, but seems to have lost consciousness. He may still be treatable, if any of you are capable. Um... Very capable, just not of doctoring. Yes, uh, I'm not an especially talented healer. I think know. I am. I have, like, a constitution 2 high F healing, but I don't know if that's, like, me or someone else. Oh, as in you get an extra 2 con whenever you are healed? I think so? Hmm. I think it'd my... be weird if constitution was used for healing no, unless plague not. doctors are a thing. Uh, it means when you uh, when you take a rest, you regain more hit points. Ah, uh, yeah. I should make that talent more obvious. When do you have any ability to grant healing to people? No. Hmm. Mm. Looks like he uh, did. <laughs> what what skill is necessary for a healing check? Uh, for a healing check, I believe would be intelligence. Ah, uh, good. I have all dice in that. Fucking good. Yeah. He seems to be very sick. Okay, right. cool. Before we try to m take care of him on the street, I'm going to look around. Anybody yeah, else? Is there anyone who can come help? Uh, there are a great number of people back through the city gates still enjoying the festivities here. You can hear music and talking, uh, quite loud, it probably be almost deafening when you get into the city itself, but it doesn't look like anyone's looked in your direction yet. Um, I guess I'm going to go dash over to the gates and see if I can grab a couple of guards. Yeah, sure, absolutely. There's, uh, there's a single guard in his uh, bright blue livery who sort of shakes himself out of his uh, deep stare into the middle distance when you rush up and... Before you actually say anything, he looks past you to the man who's face down on the ground and says, Oh, what? Runs forward, uh, a hand on his helmet to keep it down, and spear uh, in the other hand. What's going on here? We run into a problem. This man is sick. Oh. Uh, better that than a murder on my first day, uh... Uh, um, uh, oh, here. <laughs> the trope. He, uh, like, looks down at the guy, does exactly what, uh, Bellison had done when making sure he's still breathing, and then, uh, turns to, uh, which of you is the strongest looking? Is it, um, it is it's prob pro Vic? It's gonna it be probably Vic. Yeah. Alright. So yeah, he looks at Vic and says, come here, help, help me with you. I'll, uh, We'll get him to the the guard post to see if someone uh, someone knows who he is, or uh, m maybe a, a healer. How close is the guard post to uh, the building that we're trying to go towards? I mean, the building you're trying to go towards is the palace. Okay. So, so the guard post is probably like here. All right, fair enough. All right, I'll help. Okay, who else are you going with? Yeah. Mhm. Mm Okay. Uh, would everyone who isn't Vic give me a perception check? Would my psychic focus apply here? Uh, no. This is just uh, perception would seeing. My... Oh, I have a focus on that. There you go. 
to your special eye, see. Womp. Ooh. The mine double should actually be, Mine should actually be an 18 there. Uh, I hadn't ticked my uh, focus for seeing. Okay. Hey, look, double numbers, although I believe it has to be the first two numbers that are the doubles. No, yeah? it's any set of numbers, and the third oh, cool. die just determines uh, uh, how many stunt points you get. So, yeah, actually, Q one. also got a stunt, so... How did I? Sweet. Five. Dang. Yeah, alright, you all have five wow. stunt points. Now, can this be used in any of the stunts? Bar, yes. like, combat and stand lock in? Okay. Yeah, if you, if oh, you... I got doubles, too! <laughs> did you? Uh, I did. You I failed did. though, so you don't get a you don't trigger a stunt when you fail. Uh, let, let me actually no, make sure. Uh, Q, you also actually failed, so no. Oh, so oh, oh, no. oh no! Got your no, odds up. Coast, you fuck. <laughs> uh, however, Amelia does succeed. So if you want to uh, check out stunts, I was yeah, just about to go on sure. full in rage and twist the knife so and assault the man who's dying. I don't know, you yeah. sure you don't want to do a mighty blow on him? Or maybe uh, <laughs> maybe <fucking> taunt him? <laughs> Get your ass up, boy! <laughs> Suddenly he wakes. I, I knocked whatever Elmond was in him. Uh, let's see here. The... I'm going to go with the object of my attention, so when I find out what this is, I'll have a plus one bonus to further test to examine or perceive additional aspects about what I see until the time or venue changes. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I don't really need an advantageous position, unless I can say that that advantageous position is my noticing this does not go noticed itself. Uh, yeah, that might be an advantageous position, I think. Sure. Uh, so, yeah, you look around, and I think, Amelia, yeah, you're the only one who notices that there are several other people in the crowd mingling about who also seem to be uh, quite sweaty and have a light cough. This fellow might have gotten sick the, f the fastest, but uh, whatever he's carrying, uh, several other people seem to be suffering from as well. Do I feel like I'm suffering from something? No. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna... well... I'm gonna pull out a little handkerchief. It is a surprisingly cute, like, pink splotchy thing. And I'm going to, uh, wrap that around my nose and mouth. We... might be in the middle of some kind of epidemic, my friends. Uh, you might want to take some kind of precaution. I'll indicate a number of these ill people. Not epidemic? can't really stick a sword through a virus. No, uh, and you likewise probably shouldn't be sticking a sword through anyone who is just merely sick. Well, of course not. That's what doctors are for. They have scalpels. Okay, I I, yes. You're right, but also as well, when someone appears to be sick with what might be a fever or a flu or something, you shouldn't be scalping them anyway. They require liquids and food. The point is that we're help carrying them to the guard post, correct? Alright. Alright. Let me do a, another sense check for you. Yeah, you don't sense any active magic from anywhere except, like, one of the nearby bards up on a stage who's, like, obviously using uh, some magic to, like, do pyrotechnics behind his performance, much to the delight of children. And no traces of it. Like, no. Like what I found in the water earlier. Hmm. So yeah, at this point you guys have reached the uh, the minareted entrance to uh, this guard post. There's a couple of big towers on either side where sentries stand watch, but they clearly are uh, quite busy watching the uh, the fireworks going on in the market. Uh, and the, a lot of you bustle in and lay this heavy set merchant down on a table. And a young woman bustles out in um, 
a leather jerkin over uh, long robes that leave her uh, the size of her legs bare and she carries a uh, caduceus staff uh, couched under one arm and the symbol of the guard is embrazened on her uh, breastplate and she looks at the man and immediately says oh what happened to him uh, please uh, lift his head up help him breathe and she will into that. she will immediately uh, pull out uh, a rag and wet it down from a basin nearby and put it on his head was he hurt or supposedly he got sick recently and um well, uh, he collapsed in the middle of the street, just before us. Sick? Oh dear. She'll there seem look to be at him. quite a few people who match his symptoms out on the streets. She will uh, look up from you, then look at the other guardsmen. Return to your post. I'll tend to things here. Must keep the gate secure. The junior guard will snap a crisp salute and give one more worried look at the fellow before uh, marching out. And uh, the sorceress will uh, apply the cloth to this man's head and say, I know him. He, he peddles shoes in the market. A good man. Uh, if he's ill, many people would have been through his stall, but she'll look outside and then look at the lot of you. You say you just stumbled into him. You're not friends or family? Oh, no. No association, personally. Hmm. Very well. Um, she will look a bit uh, uncertain, but she will like reach into his um, his jacket and like pat him down to see if he has anything. And She'll like very obviously set aside his coin purse and a handful of trinkets like over in, on a tray for him to get later if he wakes up. And she finds no like address or anything on him and she sighs and says Oh, Blast. Alright. I'm afraid there's not much my magic can do other than to ease any pain he might be feeling. I don't know anyone who can cure diseases, at least uh, unless one of you is a powerful sorcerer in disguise, and she'll give you all a nervous smile. Wiggle my fingers mysteriously. Only when it comes to blowing up buildings in most grandiose fashion. I'm kidding. Ah, so the best no. kind of magic. Uh, no, it's a joke. I, I have Aww. very limited magical potential. <sighs> Alright, so you see her hand begin to glow as she waves it over this fellow, and she'll look at the lot of you and say, Well, thank you for bringing him in. That was a, a noble thing to do. No, it was a common thing to do. She'll smile at that and give you all a nod. Uh, please, I'm afraid there's nothing more you can do here. Uh, return to the festivities. Uh, I don't want to keep you, uh, for nothing. Yep. Well, not idling. Very well, then. Uh, and best of, of luck with him. If you see anybody who's starting to look ill as he did, uh, please direct them to either go to their homes or to the nearest guard post. Okay, then. Yes, yeah, so I'll do so. She will uh, return her attention to this fellow and begin uh, channeling magic into him. Yeah, I guess I'll head on out in my uh, inconspicuous pink face mask and then all black leathers. <laughs> Completely inconspicuous. Yeah, totally. The, the, uh, the dramatic appearance is obviously not spoiled by an adorable pink handkerchief on her face. No one would ever think that you're some sort of thief. They would never think that I wore the hood. That's the part. That's the genius part as well. The hood actually wears no hood. They're always looking for a hooded person. 
<laughs> well, we do live in a world where apparently nobles and politicians are good people, so I don't see why I wouldn't just trust a random person in a hoodie. <laughs> hoodie. Too, too oh. It's for a random black person in a hoodie, no less. Exactly. <laughs> it's a perfect world. Alright, so you begin your long trek through the city. There are plenty of people out and about celebrating, and certainly not all of them look ill, but uh, you can see that uh, by the time you're climbing the great steps up towards the palace, I think all of you have probably realized by now that there's more than a few people who are standing aside from others coughing or fanning themselves despite the cool weather. Yeah, as asked, I will uh, wait, wander wait, over wait. to such people. Oh, yeah. I understand your need to do the good deed and help them all to uh, the doctor's office. There's plenty of people around who are fit, fit body to be able to do that. Of we course, are I'm not going to help them go them, but I'm going to tell them they should go to these places. None of them are collapsing. Oh, okay, then that's fine. Yes, and again, it's only the people on our way. I would spend more time, but it seems that we should, you know, best hurry to our destination. All right, so yeah, you. Uh, so anyone on the route, I'll let them know that uh, there might be a bit of a sickness going around, and they had uh, best purchase what they wish to purchase, then be on their way home, nor to a guard post. All right, so your good deeds done, you proceed up the central tower of the cathedral of the Lady of Light, up through a garden, then up through another grandiose stairwell to the palace itself. Uh, whereupon you see uh, the great golden gates uh, flanked by a cadre of knights in their shining silver armor with great blue plumes coming up from their helmets and long two-handed swords planted in the ground before them. The gates are for the moment closed and the palace looks... well, it looks like the palace always has. You see nothing out of the ordinary except for no one coming or going at this particular moment. I'll walk up to the guards and make my introductions. You again, uh, one of the guards hey. says, squinting at you. Yes, yes, me again. How's it been? Hope the day's been good. Not too boring on guard duty, I assume? As much as I'd rather be down at the festival than standing about, Our Lady deserves our protection, and it is our duty to do it. And as for you, I'm afraid Princess Annalise has said no thank you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not here for another proposal, thank you. We're actually here to do our jobs. What is your job, sir? Haven't you noticed, my friend? Something foul is in the air. In the water. The flowers in the gardens, they're wilting. People in the streets are going sick. And the only regularity that ties them all together is the fact that no one is coming in or out of the palace. Why, we find folk of adventuring are here to figure out what exactly is going on, and to fix it. And, uh, how do you propose to do that? I don't know. We're adventurers. We just kind of fly by the seat of our pants. He squints at you. I smile at him. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry, but I'm afraid the princess has ordered that no one may enter without her consent. Mm, why is that? Was From what I understand, the palace is usually open. Was it just me, or, or was he tacitly admitting that there was something that needs to be fixed? It sounds a little bit. You're not wrong. My friend. Wait, are you guys saying that out loud? Um, no, you're up. I like, can't anyway. out loud. Okay. Well, My you... out loud conversation is meow. Are you thinking that out loud? <laughs> <laughs> meow. Are you thinking that, or do I think that I think that you're thinking that? Oh, the guard God. snaps at you for condescendingly meowing. But, uh... Um... <laughs> no, actually, <laughs> like, one of the other guards, a, uh, like, five-foot-nothing uh, woman with olive skin, like, sees the kitty and looks askance, see that there's no, like, looming threats, then crouches down in front of the cat and just, like, rubs on you. Oh. Yep. Now 
walls, Indy? Asked the guard. And why is the gate? Why are the gates closed? From my understanding, the gates are usually open for the public. They are, but not today. The princess has ordered it so, and so it shall be. Even on this special holy day, you don't find that odd. Mine is not to reason why. The princess is a wise and noble heroine of our time. If she commands, we do. Completely agree with you. But, hey, I'll level with you. We just want to go inside real quick and make sure that everything's all right. Just go down to the streets yourselves and you can see that things are a little bit fishy. Tell you what, we'll go in and out completely quiet and make no fuss. If nothing's wrong, at a um like at a cursory glance, then we'll com um, leave the castle completely without making scene. And if I have to make a communication roll to attempt that, I will, and kind of go like, "Come on, buddy, you know I'm harmless." That last time I was here at the castle was some of the best times that this castle's ever had. <laughs> Why don't you, uh, yeah, go ahead and make a communications test, and we'll see just how fun that last time you were here was. Apparently decently fun. I don't know. That was all right. You didn't get thrown out. <laughs> if, you, if you'd rolled, like, double ones, it'd be like, and he was the one who threw you out. <sighs> and what fun wasn't that? <laughs> Sweat. <laughs> but no, it's fine. So... Still, the guard, like, frowns and starts to say something, raising his uh, gauntleted hand to gesticulate, but then he stops and sort of squints, not at you, but just off into the middle distance for a moment. Then sighs and shakes his head and puts his uh, gauntlet back down on the palm of his sword and says, Very well, you may enter. Please, the yes. Chamberlain will see you just inside the courtyard. I smile at him and go, thank you for your service. It's brave men and you it's brave and intuitive men like you that keep this kingdom safe. He's not sure if you're being sarcastic or not, so he'll just give you like a a non committal nod and let you in. To be fair, most people aren't. Mm -hmm. On words. Alright. So inside uh is a great open courtyard with uh huge raised beds of flowers that grow almost as tall as a man and inside uh, you also see several horses in full livery milling about as if ready to be summoned up to charge into battle at a moment's notice but for now they simply graze happily and uh, immediately between you and the doors of the palace itself you see a um, a young man with a short cut hair and a face full of freckles wearing the princess's uh, livery that great big blue um... wearing the princess's underwear <laughs> this is what it looks like he wishes <laughs> uh, wearing the um, the tabard of our lady and he holds a a book close at hand and seems to have the equipment for writing in it uh, attached to his person so that he can use it at a moment's notice and he gives you all a uh, a nervous smile as this group of armed individuals approaches him. Um, he hello. Hello. Uh, if you'll uh, please uh, turn your uh, attentions here, the the chamberlain will will see you, and he will gesture uh, over towards the uh, the nearest big patch of grass and flowers where the horses are grazing. Right. Right. But we want to be in the palace. I'll kind of whisper to myself, hopefully the Chamberlain doesn't just send us away after a few dismissal, everything is fine. Stop being a racist and go and say hello. I'll kind of blink at the cat and go, well, guess... I didn't know I was being racist, but now I have to rectify that. So I'll, I guess I'll w go over and wait by, uh, you said the stables, right? Where the horses are grazing? Or like no, the there's no park? stables, they're just milling about in the courtyard of the palace, given free okay. reign. 
Okay. Is that usually a thing that happens? Uh, yeah, every time you've been to the palace, you've seen horses uh, chilling out here in the garden. All right, so all is, all is uh, normal right now. Mm -hmm. And in fact, at this point, uh, one of the horses sort of walks up towards you and gives a little <sighs> and flicks its mane back and forth. I'll whip my mane back and forth. Before I attempt to pet the horse, let me make sure what animal handling is. You're being racist again. <laughs> Damn, I can't even say you're wrong about it. It's communication, by the way. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to... Uh... Is this is a not good a psychic horsey. horse? I'll, I'll pet... Aren't you beautiful? I'll touch Gentle Mare. Uh, yeah, so you, uh, you pat the horse's... Uh mane and it is thick and luxurious more so than any uh steeds hair you've ever touched before and at this point you notice that yeah it's it's uh coat is the purest silvery white you've ever seen and its eyes are this deep rich brown that seem to stare into your very soul you're you're new here aren't you you feel a slight pressure in your brain ah I see what's going on here. I accept. Yes, and all of you feel this at once, uh, if you allow sure. it. Sure. Oh, of course. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I will announce that they are just beautiful. And what about uh, Q? Will you allow another psychic uh, invasion into your mind? Denied! <laughs> okay. Denied. Someone has left their phone off the receiver, and you just keep hitting dial tone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so the horse like will look from uh from Vic over to uh the the uh, the pale fellow over there and flick his mane again and the rest of you here uh I thank you for the compliments and no I'm not new. I've been here longer than you've been alive. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing that I've missed you before. You're far too beautiful to have not caught the eye. The layers go on thick. He uh, gives a proud flick of his mane and says, I'm not normally one for vanity, but I do enjoy the occasional compliment. <sighs> he will sort of make a gesture that kind of looks like rolling his shoulders. Just gonna stretch out that humble brag. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, but where are my manners? I am the Chamberlain of the castle. A pleasure. A horse Vic is the of... Chamberlain? Yep. Yeah. Cool. Vic Vicoria, as I am sure you've heard of my exploits. I've seen your exploits, in fact. Uh, the princess was uh, quite entertained that night. If I can say anything, it's that I at least gave her a night of entertainment. Oh my god. So, yeah, uh, you are just seeing a a horse staring at your friends, Shin, and uh, they are talking to it. Does this, like, strike you as weird or abnormal at all, or are you just like, I just don't want any part of that? Yeah, it's it's more just I don't want anything in my head. Hey, hey. Once you yeah, know something in... There's the horse's name, Charles! <laughs> God damn it. Get out of my head, Charles! No, I'm I'm under the I'm under the superstition, um, proven or not, that you know once you let something in, it's harder to get them back out again. So, as you can probably have noticed from our charmingly ragtag assemblage of a group, we are adventurers. We come here to try to help fix an ill that is starting to plague this town. Hmm. This place be illin. Yes. Vic Vicoria, and uh, who are your friends? Ah, again, rude as I am, my name is Charlemagne. Nice. Charlemagne, it is a pleasure. I am Amelia. I greet you, Charlemagne. I am Bellisan of the West. He gives you a deep, respectful bow, Bellisan. And I will return it 
as much as my feline body you know, does bowels. Surely it looks like that thing where you stretch forward and then paddle the front claws instead. It just, just looks like a cat stretch. <laughs> I'm going to put my hands on both uh, Adamarius and uh, Shin and go, yes, don't what? be rude, you two. Introduce yourselves. What? Huh? Oh, oh, yes, I, I am Adamarius. Adamarius. Bow. A lovely name. To the horse. <laughs> oh, so I don't know its name, but it's Bow. And yeah, it just sort of looks at you, and uh, then looks at the the page nearby, who uh, scurries over and says, uh, uh, "The the Lord Charlemagne uh, greets you." His name is Shinfelia. Don't worry, he's shy. So shy. Yes, extremely shy. Hmm. The shyest. I pat him on the back and go, "Adorable." I hate pawns. Right. Under my breath. Under my breath. So do you know what we're talking about when I say a great ill? And I'll do finger wiggles. Unfortunately, I know more than I would like. Uh, before I say more, I require a promise of each of you. Of course. Any promise that involves doing good by the land is a promise you automatically have from me. I require you to be discreet with what I tell you. Do not share this information beyond the castle walls. Ah, oh, discreet. Now that is a promise I can meet. Happily, as long I as it. you don't mind it becoming a story of our exploits once we successfully rescue this, um, fix whatever is going wrong, then of course. Those ah, need be, it can be a secret amended from the uh, final tale. I would not dream Names of denying the Names of people and places were changed to innocent. And the horse will turn pointedly towards Shin. I put my thumb up. The horse continues to look pointedly and uh, his scribe will say, uh, The Lord Chamberlain asks that you... Uh, Speak your promise aloud. I do so solemnly swear upon my name to not do whatever it is you wanted me to do. Uh, that that you won't uh, speak this information he will give uh, your companions uh, beyond the castle walls. I will not repeat any information that he happens to tell me. Right. The uh, the page will nod, and the Chamberlain will give you one last like lingering look, then turn to the rest of the group and say, <laughs> "I will brain speak." Please We're starting to suspect he's a bit of an asshole, but it's okay. <laughs> Please tell me you spy the obvious loophole, Charlemagne. Of course, of course. But if I don't tell him anything, and you don't tell him anything, then he can remain blissfully ignorant. Sounds good to me. I can't wait for the inevitable betrayal. Now. That everyone but Vic would have seen coming. Would you please follow me? And the horse will turn towards the doors and walk inside the palace as a couple of guards, like, pull them open, letting out these huge rays of light from inside as the stained glass is all. Uh, shooting down multicolored light that hits this golden throne inside and reflects it back out, almost blindingly radiant. Everyone follow Dr. Horse. Yes. Of course. Of course. <sighs> Alright, so the horse will lead you all through uh, the uh, long, elegantly decorated halls of the palace which are just wide enough for him to maneuver through until you get to a set of stairs at which point uh, he will tell you I'm afraid I don't handle these stairs well uh, a bit of an oversight from the architect I suppose uh, my page will take you the rest of the way up 
I shall awesome. see you again outside, I'm sure. And the horse will turn around and stride off. And you are left with this nervous, like, 15-year-old kid. I like that horse. Did you? He seemed to think you were quite the asshole for not sharing in, um, well, this course. I'm not a fan of sharing. Like I said. Or, t or touching, even if it's mines. Just touching in general. He was just about mentally. to pat you on the back again. <laughs> there was a reason why I said that. Well, either way, I'm sure all is fine. Let's hurry up the stairs and figure out which information we need to know. Man, I love stairs. All right. uh, the page... Do you have another stairs song to go on? Ah, uh, I do. Oh I'd like a look to Shin, like, why would you do this to us? <laughs> <laughs> Shin smiles. Because I'm an asshole. I'm an asshole. I'm an asshole. The stare song. <laughs> oh god. Shin will pointedly clap along. That was per that was a performance roll too. All right. Excellent. <laughs> Fucking, you nailed it. Did you get? Please tell me you got some dubs. Ah, oh, no dubs. Oh my god, a stunt would have been amazing. This song yeah. is just so catchy <laughs> that it ca it's it trickles down in every like window and hall, and people find themselves whistling it to themselves, even though they're not aware of it. <laughs> I swear to Christ, DCL's character has to pick Tower of Will every opportunity. If I had to have one good roll. I'm glad it was on the stair songs. <laughs> just to keep a to keep catchy songs out of your head, you have to you have to use the psychic shield effect. Oh no. <laughs> That'd be hilarious if he actually was, like, a psychic and could influence your mind with, like, terrible songs. Isn't that, like, basically... I know a song that'll get on, you know. Oh, you God. Know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it just, just, just steals dice off of people that you're up against. Just wait till we find a ladder. The ladder song's the best song. <laughs> not for honor, not for you. This is why we're friends. Because you got that immediately. Yay. All right. Uh, so the page leads you up just uh, two flights of stairs to a long hallway that has about a dozen knights standing in it, all with their backs pressed to the walls, and almost in eerie unison they turn their heads towards you, seeing the newcomers approaching. Of course they did. They all heard the stair song. They did indeed. Uh, like, one of them near the back is actually like just humming it and is hoping no one will notice. Uh, so, you go all the way up to the door at the end of the hallway, the only door on this hallway. And just as you get there, two of the knights will cross their blades in front of Shin. And just, like, one of them shakes their head at you like, uh-uh. Me specifically? The... Yeah, you specifically, after everyone else has walked past. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, he's already been proven that he's not allowed to, to learn what we learn next, Evic. Hmm, but he's one we of the made... adventuring group. Adventurers are all about camaraderie. Uh, and he'll have to make do. I put my hand up and I go, it's, it's fine, friends. I'll find out through some way or another. Are you sure? Wouldn't want to leave you out of the adventure. I am still, next so. to certain you will not be able to keep your promise, so do not worry. Hmm. I like look between Jin and Vic and be like, "We can try." Well, the bonds of friendship strengthen us even when we're not in the same room. Stay strong, my friend. Yes, feel free to sing the song. I lament in a hallway. Your every passing. Please hurry back. I'll walk over to uh, Amelia and go. I think I'm beginning to crack his cold exterior. You'll find that his interior is colder and sharper, so be careful. Right. Ta! So can you pass the... the page will open the door, but not follow you inside. I'm and... throughout this entire endeavor, though. I'm gonna like fold my arms and just bore holes into the guards. Mm-hmm. I have willpower of three, okay? I'm gonna, I win this staring contest. They're all like 20th level paladins, so I hate to break it to you, but... I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I have the courage to follow through with my bullshittery, which is my focus. Uh, Alright, 
Uh, so yeah, you are left outside, everyone else uh, goes on in, and you enter into a huge, lavishly decorated bedchamber with a great uh, curtain bed at the far end, uh, two hearths, one on either uh, side wall, and large, lush carpeting everywhere. Uh, several paintings hang on the walls of uh, all of the same woman, the uh, the Lady Gloriana, your queen and savior. And sitting by the side of the bed, you see an old man, maybe 70 years old, hair thinned and graying, or long since grayed, I should say. And he's wearing a servant's jacket that's quite old and faded and clearly has been repaired many times. Do I recognize him? Uh, you've seen him, but you don't know who he is. Yes. And laying in the bed uh, is Princess Annalise, handmaiden of the Queen, ruler of the city. Uh, and she quiet. looks quite ill. She's sitting up, but you can see her brow is streaked with sweat and her hair is pulled back into a messy bun behind her. And she mm. uh, looks up from a large leather tome that is laying in her lap as you enter and she gives you all a weak smile. It would seem even illness can't dismiss your beauty. Damn it, it that was literally what I was about to say. Yes, but you've already tried. Let's not push it too far. You don't want to get kicked out of the palace a second time. Ah, I see Vic travels with uh, like minds. She says, no, I <laughs> just have a quick tongue. Just think nothing of it. It was more important to beat him to the line, frankly. Yes. Vic tries not to pout. She smiles weakly and then coughs into her hand quite suddenly, and the old man is quick to put a hand on her back comfortingly, but uh, the episode lasts for another 30 seconds or so before she waves him off and rubs tears from her eyes. As if I needed any more motivation to get to the bottom of this and fix it. I would like to make a sense arcana. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yes, that's a good idea. Should go to the bathroom. Uh, so... Neither of you sense any active magic on her, uh, but you do see like the tiniest little particulates of magic floating around in a goblet of water nearby. I'm going to squint and look towards the water. Is that water there from the river or from the main source? And I'll like you know just indicate vaguely in the direction of the river that feeds this ta this city. Yeah, so the princess looks like she was about to speak, then like follows your gaze over to the to the goblet, then sort of quirks an eyebrow. Uh, yes, of course, all of the water in the city comes from there. I would recommend locating sources that are self-contained, perhaps stored a few weeks at least before this point. There's something wrong with the water. With the water? We have reason to believe that some subtle, foul magic is tainting the source of all the water in the city. She puts a hand over her mouth in surprise and says, Oh, by Our Lady's grace. You mean more people in the city are getting sick, don't you? Yes. We've already seen them as we were walking on just to get here. We were tipped off by the fact that the garden's flowers have started to wilt. Indeed. Oh. That pains me to my very heart to hear it. Yes. The situation is grave. That's why heroes exist. I'm just gonna clance side long at Vic. She will look mm. up at you and ask. And you wish to be the heroes that save us from this plague? 
not wish to, will be. It's a foregone conclusion. I swear on my name I will use every bit of my power and resources to make sure that whatever is poisoning this water is put a stop to. And I am of like mind. Although some kind of reward would be appreciated. A carriage of food, perhaps. I have a great many mouths depending on me. Of course, if you can solve this now more dire situation than I had ever thought, I, I would be glad to reward you with whatever you may need. I had hoped this illness was contained just to the palace, but uh, if it seems that it's spreading to my people, then something must be done. I myself rode up the river's source to try and find what, what could be wrong, but uh, I fell ill before I could make it anywhere. She will indicate uh, her left arm, which you now see has uh, some fairly significant bruising on it, like she might have fallen off her horse. Hmm. Right. So the trip still has not been made. Nobody knows if there's something out at the source or somebody interfering with it. There is a spirit in the water, far up river. She has always kept it clean and pure. I cannot imagine that the water itself has been tainted. Uh, she would never allow it. I suppose we should go have a talk with this spirit. Maybe she knows, if anybody, what's wrong. Assuming the spirit still lives, it may be that a servant of the Shadow King has come from hiding. One even kill a sir, um, spirit. One can dismiss one, if not else. Mm. Or entrap it in a body. I'll turn back to the princess and uh, mention, my fine feline friend makes a valid point. We might be dealing with adversaries of the Shadow King. What would you say our authority is if we were to meet such foes? Are we allowed to slay them on sight, or do you want to apprehend them, to bring them to proper justice? If you find yourself confronted with servants of the Shadow King, feel no guilt in smiting them where they stand, but I should say that taking one alive would certainly make discovering what befouls the water easier. Of course. Black with the utmost discretion and professionalism. <laughs> Not in agreement. If, our, if the look of our group does not inspire confidence, I do not know what will. Well, we're certainly eclectic enough a looking of a group to be some kind of legendary story bound heroes. Now you're catching on. Oh, goodness me, but sometimes I wish I weren't. If it turns out you are, then I shall have my court bards commission your great epic. Have no doubt. Goodness. Greatness is like a beacon in an ocean of darkness. You just have no choice but to walk towards the light, my friend. I would still rather all was told without me in stories, but sure. The princess will laugh, but that turns into a cough, this one longer than the last, and when it fades, she's uh, gone quite pale, and you can see uh, the faintest hint of like red streaks on her hand where she was covering her mouth, and she the looks princess. down at it in alarm, and then just quickly wipes it off on a kerchief. Princess, please, take care not to drink any more of the water. You're the valued jewel of our civilization. We can't go on if we lose you. I'm sure you'll find a way, but I have no intention of leaving this mortal coil quite yet. But Don't I would bid you hurry. Don't get addicted to water! <laughs> I would bid you hurry. Then hurry I... we shall. 
And I promise we we'll act. wish you best recovery. I promise we'll act with haste. Stay strong. Your people need you. She will give you all a smile, and uh, if you have nothing else to say, then it would seem the appropriate time to leave. Well, now, I, and before we get outside back, I'll say, well, now it makes sense as to why things have been kept hush hush. Yes. And let's not go blabbing about it. It's the last thing people need to hear. And remember, we've been promised not to tell people this information and pass it on. That includes certain other people, members of our party, who did not agree. Of course, the nature of our adventure has changed. No longer is this just a jovial adventure of, full of love and mischief. Now we have a serious task that meets serious demands. Yes, yes. We'll, make we'll need to ride out as soon as possible. We have to get to the source with no delay. Nobody say it. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Took me a second, too. I'm proud that I didn't instantly go there. Thank you so much. <laughs> Either way. Well, we I was, like, look. waiting with bated breath to be disappointed, and now instead I'm delighted. <laughs> We're going to meet up with our very shy friend. Yes, he's still standing outside. Uh, what are you doing about now? <laughs> Singing the song of waiting outside. Oh, God. Is this me? Yeah, yeah. you, Shin. Uh, I'm still been fucking staring, staring balls into the paladins. Ah, uh, staring contest. You staring at the bolts? Just... Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. That's that's my power. Just make everyone around going... you uncomfortable. Yeah. I have the we're power to ruin the fun at parties. <laughs> no one invites me, so you know. I don't know. Well played. Well, way to way to well played to double down on that one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you recover your friend and head back downstairs. Yes, the yeah. Hobbit. Oh man, that's the the songs are the best part of those movies too. So much fun. Da, da, da. Down down to Goblin Town is my fucking jam. Yes. Oh my god, fucking god damn it. <laughs> oh, now I want to rewatch the movies. All right. Anyway, uh, for right now though. The audiobooks have better renditions of the songs, in my opinion. Really. Yeah. Hmm. That's amazing. For now, yeah. let's pull our friend away from his staring contest and start getting oh, ready to hit the road. Alright, so you return downstairs and find the, um, the great white horse Charlemagne awaiting you. As we walk downstairs, I'm like, so, what'd you find out? That things are serious. We have to a venture to go carry out. To where? I mean, to the same place we were going in the first place. Source of the water. Which is where? Well, let's go. You'll see for yourself. And we have to actually... Oh, can uh, like, you yet? <laughs> we have to actually, like, ascend the, uh, like, edge of the city to get over that cliff ledge bit, right? Yeah, there's a, a long bridge that goes past the palace and then up. Oh, yeah. so we don't want to bring horses. Uh, mm -hmm. No, I mean, there's like a path for horses and carriages and shit. Charlemagne, would it be too much to trouble you for some of your finest horses? We need to make the utmost haste to go to where our destination is. Ah, uh, if my dear princess has given you her blessing to venture forth... And it would be my honor to supply you with our finest steeds. We'll make sure that these are the steeds that carry us to victory. We'll make sure, and I say this within the mind so that uh, friend can't hear us, <laughs> we'll be able to depoison. we'll find the source of the poison. Alright, uh, yeah, Charlemagne will 
give you all a nod, and then as you're uh, as you're leaving, he will say, <clears throat> "About a day's ride along the river, you will find a village. In that village lives a witch named Talisa. She is not the most noble of souls, but she is not a wicked witch." Perhaps she can tell you more about what dangers lie ahead of you on your quest. If there's even a spark of kindness in her heart, I'll make sure to be able to open her up. <laughs> Please don't speak of opening up random people. Um, Perhaps I should be the one to speak to Miss Talisa when we find her. Careful you don't become her new familiar. Rude. Of course. Bitches love kittens. I mean, everyone <laughs> bitch, loves kittens. Bitches, bitches love kittens. I think you mean bitches love pussy. That's yes. true. <sighs> Stop this. <laughs> Stop <laughs> these <laughs> sinful hands. Alright. Well, we got our horses. Should we get rations? Or do we already sort that out? I don't know. Do you have rations written down in your character sheets? Let's check. Time to find out that we all die on the journey. What I'm asking now. Worst comes to worst, I can just eat one of you. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but not until after we die. Jeez. And, and just look, make and a wizard you die can real speed quick. that process the fuck along. So, if we did have rations, where would we write that down? Uh, probably under equipment on the third tab. Persona. I haven't got any equipment. Persona. Yeah, I actually don't own anything. Uh, well... Yeah, I distinctly remember you telling us that this game didn't care about specific details like that. I mean, it doesn't care about specific details of your weapons, but hold on. Like, Blue Rose specifically starts you out with, like, some stuff like money. Oh, Ooh, we get to have things? I like things. Yes, you may in fact own things. Oh, I mean, yay. I think we skipped this part in character creation. Yeah, uh, we definitely yeah. know what weapons we got to start with because we got to start with them, but we never bought things. We don't own things. Alright, let me find where it lists what you start with. We also didn't do anything with bonds. We've not done any bondage yet, it's true. How disappointing. Yeah, the section for starting gear is just says starting weapons. <laughs> ah. That'll be why. Hmm. Yeah, Blue Rose doesn't worry too much about detailing the specific equipment they carry. Most are presumed to have access to the tools necessary to perform tasks as defined and blah 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 blah. Hmm. Yeah, weapons so like don't even have like a all... cost associated. Is there no money yeah. in this game? Guess not. Which means that this system is superior. Currency in Aldia, uh, there, there is this whole sidebar about uh, about money, um, like on page fifty-one. Yeah, but nothing has a price associated with it. Yeah, I've, I feel so like what money, money quite literally is flavor. This means what this is... is the best system. This is the best is... timeline. What is money when one has adventure to be on? God damn you, I'm on so many levels. Oh, yeah, quite <laughs> literally here, it's uh, mundane equipment and accessibility is a common sense affair based on their situation and background. An expert acrobat is that likely to have access to ropes, grappling hooks, and other such items. So is a thief, a mountaineer, and anyone expecting to climb with the time and opportunity to find huh. and purchase such goods. Likewise, few adventurers undertake a journey without suitable clothes, food, water, and other basic supplies. It's a game about romance and drama, not resource management. If it's dramatic and appropriate to have some tool or item, the heroes likely do. If it's more interesting that they do not, then they may not. It's all of the narrator's discretion. So if you want us to all starve to death in the middle of the journey, then it would actually be your choice. I mean... <laughs> as much yeah, as that's but... usually my deal with games, uh, no, alright. That's, that's a yeah. very big departure from uh, the other Fantasy Age games. 
Yeah. For example, a healer who loses their stuff would have to make do with makeshift things, but they're always assumed to have them, assuming that, like, you know, there hasn't been some kind of epic failure or situation that's stolen it from them. It's like, you know how to heal? When congratulations, you also happen to have a first aid kit, and that kind of shit. <laughs> well, Coolio. Yay! Then yeah, you all have rations and backpacks and whatever other random bullshit you need. Alright. Perfect. No starving for this party. For now. Yay! I'll get you First yet. action, you trip over on a hill and lose all your shit. No! no you, you go to take a shit on the, uh, the riverbank and you fall in and break your neck on a rock. No, no, you go to take a shit in a riverbed, and then the water spirit fucking has some strong words for you. Directly up the <laughs> Or you're perfectly positioned for the fist of revenge. <laughs> and this time it ain't romantic. Oh no. You know what, I was gonna go make that cup of tea. I'll be right back. Alright, so... The party mounts up on their new steeds and sets out in search of adventure. And I'd like somebody to roll me 3d6. Right, sure. Uh, who, who, whose luck do we trust more? I mean, I trust Merzendi's luck more, so go ahead, DCL. <laughs> You know, yeah. that's fair logic. Alright. So yeah, the first day goes by uneventfully. You finish out the day's ride at the side of the river. Now, upcountry from the city is beautiful, to say the least. There are tall trees dotting the landscape, and in the distance you can see vast snowy mountains, but around here there is just rolling grass, uh, wild uh, wheats and barleys growing off in the fields uh, some ways distant, and further than that you can see near the foothills great forests, dense and full of life, and you seem unaffected by whatever has befouled the water. Ah, uh, the open plains. These are my true homelands. Aren't they beautiful, my friends? Nothing but silence. That's what you get. Yeah, the, you, you are building bonds in this session. <laughs> Feel free to write them down, okay. but... Well, either way, we all should be getting used to these planes. I don't know about the rest of you, but I am a fair-traveled man. It is on these roads that we make our lives and fortunes. I have people to travel for me. Oh, really? You some sort of noble? Yes. Aha! Getting your first taste of adventure out past the gilded halls of your homeland. Yes. Well, then you're in for a jolly good time. You definitely chose the right travel companions. And by travel companions, I mean me. I'm having a lot of fun right now. The jolliest. As, as you should. Now, we've had a lot of um, hard writing, and it seems we're not going to reach our destination just yet. Actually, before I get ahead of myself, what time is it? What uh, time do you want it to be to you? <laughs> it's pretty late. Like, you're getting ready to make camp, probably. Yep, <clears throat> it's about time we set up camp. This will be the best part of the new experience for you. There's nothing quite like Stu after a hard day's riding. I have people to set up camp for me. Well, those people aren't here now, so you have to set up camp yourself. Come on, it'll be fun. I allow DCL's character to set up camp for me. 
I try to make an attempt to show him how to set up camp when all he's doing is just letting me set it up for him. I'll roll for that if you like. <laughs> sure. How convincing is DCL's character? What do I what do I contest communication with? Uh probably willpower self discipline. Yes! <laughs> versus yeah, willpower. communication persuasion. Alright. I uh, click the thing. There we go. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> Hasn't shown up on mine. I think you lost that. Wow. Oh, gosh. Now it's shown Good up. Good job. Oh, oh, God. The communication. <laughs> uh, go. <Whoa>. Fuck. <laughs> no. Force partaking. So, what happens when someone rolls a triple, Saven? Well, they get... Six whole stunt points. Spend them as you see fit. Oh, God. <laughs> May, might I suggest, uh, let's see, new oh, friends or anything. flirt? No! <laughs> let's, let's keep with new friends. <laughs> Both comes in many forms and sizes. Many sizes. But first, there must be friendship. Oh, God. Did you just say you were going to come in, Shen? <laughs> see, I told you you should take the flirt option. Oh god damn it! Right, so friends first. So how do stunts work? Do I did get to keep them and spend them on other things, or do I have to spend them all in this roll? You have to spend them all right now. Wait, but sweet you fucking can... Satan! You rolled triple sixes on flirting with Shin. No, she didn't flirt with me. He tried to convince me to partake of setting no, up I a camp. Part... No, I have to partake. <laughs> new friends, new enemies, stun silence. We're Entran enraged. Well, flirt. Oh, the flirt enrage me, please. <laughs> She was one character. The character she now admires you or think of, thinks of you as a friend. Oh, so, uh, I don't know why. Wait, wait. wait. If people... they dislike you already, you have to make an opposed test again. I don't actually dislike him, though. <laughs> just, just indifferent. Yeah, I'm just abrasive. <laughs> yeah, he, they don't dislike each other. He's just a piece of shit. That's all. Yeah. I think since I, I got six stunt points, I can just dump them into making him my friend. Mm, Alright, so that's three of your stunt points. Do you want to have uh, the other three spent anywhere? Uh, just do it with the, do it with the fucking... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what do you... Can I spend them all in um, new friends again? Uh, you can uh, push that onto another character, for sure. Uh, sure, why not? Let's become better friends. Let's make this a team-building exercise. Like I said, oh adventurers God. need to be a camaraderie. So, uh, I'll also use this chance to get um, in good with Adamaris. Woo! I wish you just fucking made new friends and made new enemies and just brought them back down to neutral. Did you know I've just done that? <laughs> <laughs> like, yay! Boo! See, I have a feeling that me and Amelia will be getting close pretty soon, and who isn't friends with cats? Cats are the best. Mm. Meow. <laughs> Meow. Right. Which reminds me, I'll need to make sure to set up a little tent for the cat as well. A miniature cat cat pup tent? Oh, it needs to be Aww. one of those uh, hangy bag tents. Exactly. You know what you should have done, though? You should have fucking... You should have new friends and then knocked me prone and just... Poof, friendship! <laughs> You're blown away by his winning smile. <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> Fuck. oh god. Oh, forced partaking. Fine, he moves up from a pawn to a rook in my eyes. The winning smile. Alright, so, tense set up. Oh, fucking change your bloody thing in my bonds as well. Relationships. Oh, what's your bloody character called? Vic. Vic. Better than your average. Piece of shit human. Porn. Better than your average porn. Nice. Every time you say that, I just hear porn. I'm like, uh. Better I'm than your average. Probably it was too. pretty, pretty he good. It was pretty good. Porn, I mean, he could have yeah. fled. Triple, triple six was pretty good. <laughs> mm. It was devil porn. I liked it. Okay. I will begrudgingly assist him with making camp and feign interest as best I can. 
I will be amused and then help put up a camp where everyone else has probably got like you know possibly nice camping tents and such. I have one of those. It looks more like a rustic fucking forest survival tent, which is probably a little uh, bit out of place near like the lakeside and the fields. That tent looks like one with history behind it. No, no history, just location. I'm not from around here, from the forests. I come from far away. I come from a land down under. <laughs> Eight. Alright, so now that our camps are set up, and that we have a delicious stew waiting for us before we hit the hay, all that's left is the set up watch. There are untold number of dangers and creatures waiting in the night just to skulk and come up and try to devour un un um, unaware adventurers. So we hour. have to make sure that we're all on guard. Alright. I, well, I usually take am the on guard. First one. I'll take the darkest. My eyes will be good for something. I'll take one of the twilight shifts, since I still am a human and do need definitely have trouble adjusting to the night. Chin does not offer. At all. <laughs> he just ex expects these guys just to do it. I have a feeling that Shin is one of the earlier wakers, so he'll probably have the morning shift. I agree. Maybe they can sort out breakfast while they're at it. Oh, that would fucking dead ass breakfast. <laughs> no, 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 fucking miserable goddamn breakfast. Oh, here you go. I got a bowl of shut the fuck up and a plate of delicious crispy <laughs> fuck you. Ah, how are you? The morning off right. You've already fucking got it sorted. <laughs> how did you? Did you look at the recipe? Yeah. Got it all in my head. All oh. right. So, the party sets up their watches, goes to sleep, the night passes, as uneventfully as these things ever do, and no, when dawn know. comes, you can all smell something quite foul on the air. <laughs> it's my oh, breakfast! come on, man! <laughs> I was joking about breakfast! I've gone to the fucking river and just, like, poured literal poison into the fucking gruel. Mm, that's definitely a unique smelling food choice, my friend. I can't wake up assuming that the smell I have smells food. Is, um, is Shin actually cooking? No, he's still asleep. Oh. Hmm. What's that smell, then? Kinda... Sleep farts? Look around, I'll kind of sniff around in the air. It seems to be coming from the river. Is it powerful enough to wake someone up from sleep? No, but when you wake up, you immediately go like, ah. Ugh. It seems whatever is poisoning the river is at it again. We need to hurry up and get ready. That smell is not one that I favor. I'll uh, attempt to establish psychic contact with people uh, again. Yep, I will uh, accept. I wasn't forced to be friends with the cat, was I? It was just the the winning smile. Yeah, just with just with Vic. Denied then. You know, I could just mind drape you. I but can that do that. Great. You could, and then we'd have the in-party fight. Or not. You can't just you rape people charm. because they don't you can't just rape people because they don't talk to you, that's wrong. Just that's what American to... frat boys do. <laughs> oh, oh, oh god. god. We're in oh. too deep and it's hard to see. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well I have all I will need for any conflict. Dress yourselves. I'll scout. All right. right, if you're sure. I'll prepare the horses for the day's riding. I will now wake up. <laughs> uh, 
so yeah, um, I will um, attempt to uh, head towards the river somewhat stealthily. Uh, and you know what, let's... Let's make it a little... Let's make it double. Easier. I'm going to... When I come within sight of the river, cast the spell. Sh uh, cast the arcana. Shadows embrace around the... To myself. Okay. Let me open up the old rule book here and take a look. You need the fantasy age one here. Uh, 75. You the real MVP. Yeah, since some... Um, oh wait, I actually uh, read that just this morning. That's make a, uh, what's it, 3x3 three three area shadow? 6x6 six six. Six six, shadow right. to give plus 2 on dex tests. Uh, I do need to make an intelligence roll though again. Yep, and it costs 4 mana, success or fail. Yep. But you do well, pass. Succeed. So yeah. And then I'll get an extra 2 on my dex test, so. So what does it look like when a kitty cat casts a spell? Uh, I have the perfect example for just, this. What to say? Just crosses her eyes. Oh god, what is this? Assume this isn't gonna be terrible oh, if yeah. I open on stream. <laughs> uh, nice. It's you're just good, a, it's good. just a it's just a song made up entirely of me meows and electronica. It's a minute long. No. Why did you have some fantastic such... editing? Why did you have this on such quick demand? Because I already had it prepared for that exact question. <laughs> uh, I have multiple tabs literally with bullshit I might need for dumb jokes open on this window. It's I wish this... I were kidding, but I'm and that is... fucking sad. And this is why you have the best one-liners. <laughs> <laughs> look, if you can't be quick off the mark, then make yourself look quick off the mark. Uh, what it actually looks like is just shaking my uh, body just enough that the little bell rings once. You do the cat butt wiggles. Aww. That is little... super adorable. And then, yeah, uh, stealthiness. Oh my god, I can't get the image out of my head, that's cute as fuck. No problemo, you meld on into the shadows and creep around in the brush. Make a perception test, any focus you want. Uh, psychic focus good? Uh, yeah, if you won't specifically want to be looking for psychic activity. And my suspicions are that there is something psychic or arcane going on. And, um, then yes. Yeah. Oh, or I can roll three ones. Hey. Uh, you're fairly certain the water is staring at you as you, uh, like probe it with your mind. I will stand Oh back. my tri triple ones. <laughs> Yeah, it has a big cat face. So I'm in the staring contest with my own reflection. Okay. Yep. That's that's um. where you're gonna be for the next like two hours, kitty. <laughs> One of you will break first. Hmm. Where is our little friend? We need to be hitting on the road pretty soon. Uh, I suppose knows. I should go and have a look for her. Actually, what um, is Bellison's gender? Female. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. It's kind of a masculine sounding name, so I figured I'd ask. 
Dennis? Oh, Ellison is uh, masculine. The, like any name that ends with like San, yeah, it's, it, it feels foreign, but definitely like maybe like French or something. You know, uh, I can, I can, it's, yeah. Once, it would, once well, I it would usually and it would usually end in D R E, but since that's pronounced silently anyway, it's no point writing it. Yeah, exactly. Since, yeah. Uh, no, this one wouldn't. Is it what not? Is... Where's it from? This is from Welsh. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh wait, so surely it's pronounced <laughs> Ugh. Do you know what? Do you know how the Welsh say, say the word Cymru? That's 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 Welsh for for Wales, and the the C is pronounced like a K, the Y is pronounced like a U, and the U's are pronounced like Y's. So let's talk about so let's not talk about languages that have no right to exist because they summon the Elder Gods, and. Let's go as a group when we go out to find Bellison, since there's plenty of stories of adventurers being picked off one by one when investigating something weird. Yes, by terribly laughing creatures with dreadlocks. It's true. It's a tale as old as time itself. <laughs> They'll laugh back at you in your own voice. I think by the time the rest of the party comes to investigate, my fur is standing on end and crackling with, uh, Arcane power. And so yeah, you find the cat staring into the water, bristling with magic potency. Well, San, something will matter. I'll look left and right, try to see if there's any enemies coming. There is something in the water that stares back at me. Um... Maybe it's the spirit. I'm going to just like lean in and and poke the water with my uh, bow and make the reflection ripple. Yeah. Look, no, I'm afraid not, dear. Shall we be carrying on? <laughs> I do want to try something. These spirits are ones for grand gestures. <clears throat> oh, great spirit, we humble adventurers come to beseech thee for an audience. As he does this, I roll my eyes and I'm just like, oh, God. All right. The river burbles quietly. Hmm. Figure that would work. Oh, well, I guess it's not the spirit. Come along, Belson. We have adventuring to do. I'm going to pace over to Adamaris and uh, yes. climb up onto her shoulders. Oh. Hello. I'll give that kitten some scritches. Kittens of love course scritches. I do. <laughs> Kitties love fucking scritches. Oh, fuck yeah. yeah, yeah. Alright, so the party departs. And since I found out the water is bad, my, my drinking liquid ration is exclusively wine. Okay. Just gonna point that out. So it's it may seem weird, but I just start my morning with a bottle of wine. You know, as you do. Gotta stay hydrated. Yes, and totally not because you're secretly an alcoholic. No, <laughs> good characters aren't alcoholics. <laughs> They have drinking challenges, not drinking problems. <laughs> drinking, drinking quests, my friend. That's the spirit. Oh, that that should go in the uh, uh, out of context. <laughs> yeah, well, most of the shit that we say should. Yeah. Uh, after I have my my morning wine and bacon, I'm ready to move on. Which, not gonna lie, I could fucking go for wine and bacon right now. Alright, so yeah, the party departs, and as we, uh, as the camera watches them trot along the riverside on their horses, it stays focused in one place with, like, half the river in view, and we just see, like, the slightest shape of a head sort of poke out of the water, just made of still running, burbling water from the creek, and slowly just dissipate back into the water. So the fucking uh, cat was watching. Everything God, the cat is right all along. 
And uh, on that note, I think I'm just going to call it here for the night. Oh, okay. Sure thing. Sounds good. Bit of a right. short session, but we will uh, have some hardcore adventuring to do next time. Yeah, it was adventure. a pleasant time. And yeah. thank you as usual for running, Saban. Indeedly doodly. <laughs>